Growing up, we all had those games that we enjoyed that may have not had the best reputation in later years. You know what I mean. You get a game as a kid, you rent it, your grandparents give it to you, and years later it's actually considered straight garbage. Or your friends make fun of you for playing it. But you still like playing it anyway. Well, I went through my collection and picked out games I played as a kid. I haven't put a whole lot of time into them yet since picking them up again, uh, and only one of these actually remains from my childhood collection. I figured I may as well see if I still enjoy these games, and document the results. And we are going to start with Mario is Missing. I don't remember how or why I got Mario is Missing as a kid. It might have been a Christmas present? When I first popped it in, it was obvious that this game wasn't created by Nintendo. The graphics and sound are, well, weird. They used the same character sprites from Super Mario World for, like, just a handful of characters. Otherwise, it looks like a pretty amateur effort. And to my surprise, this isn't a typical Mario adventure either. It's an educational game. Luckily, I actually really liked history and geography in school, so the subject matter of the game was actually interesting to me. Mario gets trapped at Bowser's castle in Antarctica. Luigi goes in to find him, but finds himself in a hall full of doors. The doors are portals to different cities throughout the real world, where Bowser has deployed his Koopa Troopas to steal famous landmarks. Luigi must reclaim the landmarks and return them to their proper locations. Some of these landmarks are entire buildings, or rooms, or ceilings. Which is funny, considering how big these stolen items are and how small Koopa Troopas are. Also, worth laughing at is the fact that proving your stolen item is the real thing is merely a game of a multiple choice trivia. And if you get a question wrong, the tour guide lady says, ANOTHER FAKE?! Like, other people were trying to turn in fakes? If Luigi knows the answers to the trivia, could he have just turned in a fake? So many questions. So Mario is Missing is essentially a historical trivia game lightly coated with some Mario Brothers graphics. It may be incredibly boring to a lot of people, but I actually still like it. I wanted to keep playing after I grabbed the required footage for this video, and not because of the awesome boss fights. What's wrong, Ludwig? Can't see me? Violence too much for a kid's game like this? One of two LJN games on my list, TNC Surf Designs gets a lot of crap from gamers. Honestly, I rented it a lot as a kid, and I'm not really sure why. I wasn't really into surfing or skateboarding, but for some reason, I really liked playing a game that solely includes these two activities. I never actually owned TNC Surf Designs growing up, but honestly, with the amount of gameplay it offers, which isn't much, Renting it as opposed to buying it back in the day when the game was probably full price, you know, 40, 50 bucks, renting it was the better option. TNC Surf Designs gives you three modes of play, skateboarding, surfing, and skateboarding and surfing. Skateboarding is actually pretty fun. Your character skateboards through a course that gets longer after each round. Eventually, after about 10 rounds, it stops getting longer, so that's kind of a bummer. But it's still fun to ramp over pits, grind along railings, jump over turtles and barrels, and gather up coins. The surfing mode is what a lot of people crap on, mainly because they don't know how to do it. It took me a few rounds to really get the hang of it again, and even after remembering how to play it, it still wasn't all that compelling. Not the dumpster fire people make it out to be. It's fun, but not nearly as fun as skateboarding. Okay, so in the intro, I said I haven't put much time into these games, but uh, TNC Surf Designs, I kind of lied about. I still play this game pretty often. I pop it in whenever I feel like playing a game for just a couple minutes, and I don't really want to get too invested into something. So, it's fun. It's cheap as hell, and I recommend getting a copy if you're into that sort of thing. My neighbor owned Spider-Man and X-Men and Arcade's Revenge growing up, so I never actually owned a copy myself. I wasn't much into comic book characters or superheroes growing up, so I didn't really know too much about the characters within this game. But I still enjoyed playing it. The music was pretty neat. The graphics, while not amazing, were pretty appealing. And the gameplay was okay, but I guess my standards really weren't that high back then. 
Obviously, you play as Spider-Man and various X-Men characters. They're trying to escape from some mind game trap the villain known as Arcade has stuck them in. After Spider-Man infiltrates Arcade's base, you are able to play through these illusionary levels. So like, that means you get to fight a bunch of super creepy clowns with Wolverine, or drown as Storm, and jump into electrified tracks as Cyclops. I think after some practice and repeated playthroughs, I may be able to get a bit further in the game. It's not super unfair or anything, just a bit unclear as to what you need to do in each level, and the fact that there are no checkpoints kind of makes things a bit tougher as well. I like what Arcade's Revenge could be with a bit of improvement, but as it is though, it's pretty lackluster. I still enjoy messing around with this game, and I'll likely put some more time into it in the future, as unpolished as it feels. Again, it's not really a bad game, but it's unpopular for a reason. After my first communion, back in first or second grade, I can't remember how long ago it was, my grandparents got me Bible Adventures. And it was an incredibly fitting gift, I guess. And the game was actually quite a hit at home. Even though it wasn't that normal gray NES cartridge, it got a ton of playtime on the old Nintendo. My mom even played it quite a bit herself. Bible Adventures gives you three different games to play. Baby Moses, David and Goliath, and Noah's Ark. All three games use the same platforming gameplay where you use A to jump and B to pick up or throw items. Controls are incredibly loose, leading to a lot of missed jumps and just general hilarity. Seriously, you can't take these games seriously. Did I just say that? You really can't take these games seriously. If you die, game over, but you can just restart the stage right where you left off, so you can continue to fall off the wall while trying to save Baby Moses. In Baby Moses, you attempt to carry the baby through each level to the end. That's really it. There are various enemies that will try to stop you from reaching your goal, and they'll even throw the baby in the Nile, but it's pretty straightforward. In David and Goliath, you herd sheep. As David, you have to pick up four sheep and lead them to the goal, all while avoiding rams, lions, scorpions, and slowdown. Seriously, the slowdown is what ended my fun here. In the end, you face Goliath, but I didn't have the patience to get that far. Noah's Ark is where Bible Adventures shines. You collect animal pairs and deliver them to the Ark. But it's kind of fun, especially when you have to go chasing after monkeys or pigs. Some animals are too heavy to jump with, so you have to pick them back up when jumping up the platforms on the Ark. Other animals you need to distract so you can pick them up because they're too piggly wiggly. Now it's not Super Mario Bros. 3, but it's playable. Better than the other two games on the same cart. I'll probably pop this in again to play some Noah's Ark, but it's never going to be in my regular rotation of games. It's good for some nostalgia and for some animal collecting, but anyone else would be better off spending their time playing just about anything else. Okay, so for the last game on my list, I give you Ghostbusters. The crap fest on the NES that no one in their right mind enjoys. When I was a kid, I was obsessed with Ghostbusters. I loved the TV show. I'd play with my Ghostbusters toys while watching the movies. I dressed up as a Ghostbusters several times on Halloween. When I first asked for an NES at Christmas, I found out there was a Ghostbusters game and I had to have it. But my parents never got it for me. I did rent it a lot and I enjoyed it solely because I was such a huge Ghostbusters fan. I had to go back and get footage of Ghostbusters again because my original footage screwed up. Originally, I was having problems with constantly running out of gas, but the second time I played it, I figured out that you can go faster in the Ecto-1 if you moved at the top of the screen. It made the game a lot more playable, and I was able to bust a lot of ghosts, but it's still not great by any means. Ghostbusters sucks, and no rose-colored glasses can actually fix that. Those are the games that I grew up with as a kid that are not very popular now. So what are yours? What crappy or unpopular games did you grow up playing and actually kind of developed a soft spot for? Let me know. That's all I got. Later.